Today's video is all about helping you understand Turbo Boost. I remember that when I first started to drive a turbo car, I was confused on how everything was supposed to function. What does it mean when you are on boost? How do you get on boost? Does it just happen or do you have to activate it? When should I be on boost? When should I be off boost? Is this car going to explode? I hope to answer all of these questions as well as give you a better idea of what's actually happening as you drive in this video. So hopefully you already understand how an internal combustion engine works. If not, I recommend checking out a channel like Engineering Explained or other sources. It's not all that of a complex subject, but you're going to want to understand it. One thing you need to get is what a turbocharger is actually doing. At its most basic level, a turbocharger's job is to force more air into the engine to create a more potent combustion reaction, thus generating more power. The best way to get more air into the combustion chamber is to compress that air and essentially shove it in. A turbocharger does this by having exhaust gas spin a turbine, which powers another turbine which compresses air being sucked into the turbo, creating boost. This air is made denser by cooling it using an intercooler before it is ready to be mixed with an increased amount of fuel and combusted, creating a more potent reaction. I recommend checking out other sources on turbocharging if you want to know more. So in this car, with the top mount intercooler, you have the air intake here, the air intake takes in air, it goes down, and then you can sort of see, right down in there, it goes into the turbo, to the front side of the turbo, and then comes out here, up into the intercooler, where the intercooler cools it down by having air pass over these fins here from the, the hood scoop, and then it comes out of here, into the throttle body, and then after, you know, Combustion happens, goes out the exhaust into the hot side of the turbo here, which is under this heat shield, and you can see it goes down to the exhaust as it exits. All right, so we're here in the Subaru in the, in the turbocharged vehicle, and I've already got it warmed up, got a good amount of fuel, everything checks out good so basically I'm gonna show you like how a turbo setup like this acts and what you can expect when you're driving it and how to use it uh, to optimize your drive so the important thing one thing that I found difficult to wrap my head around when I first started driving this car was you'd think that the amount of boost you have is proportional to how high your revs are but that's not the case you only have to think about how much air is entering each cylinder rather than how often a combustion is occurring in each cylinder because you know the throttle as you push down on the throttle it allows the thing that it's really doing is it's allowing more air into the engine it's opening up to let more air in so if you've got more air coming in more air has to come back out and that that air that comes back out goes into the turbo, which spools it up, and that's when you build boost. So really, your turbo is more proportion, uh, your boost is more proportional to your throttle position than it is to your revs. That's one thing that's important to remember. So you can be at high revs, but still running mostly on NA power. Now this car is the EJ205, so it's the two liter WRX motor. So most of its horsepower and torque is coming from the turbocharger, and the turbocharger makes at max about 0.1 megapascals of boost, which is about, according to my understanding, it's about 14 psi, 14 pounds of boost. Um, so that's it's it's a decent amount of boost, and the good thing about these WRX is that they're, you know, the power is very linear um, with the top mount intercooler and the way they set up the gearing and just how the engine behaves, it's a very linear, you don't really get punched as hard with the boost, but it's not very torquey until you are on boost. So there's definitely a sensation of on boost, off boost. So we're gonna come up to a straight here and I'll show you opening it up and getting on boost a little bit. Right now I'm cruising and it's making negative boost because my throttle is not very far down. My revs are about 2,500, um, I'm in fourth gear. My boost is in the negative, I'm not making any pressure, and I'm just cruising along. This is more fuel efficient, I have no reason to be pulling right now, no reason to be accelerating, so right now I'm off boost, and the engine is behaving more like a naturally aspirated engine. But when 
we come up here, I'll drop down to second, and I'll put my foot to the floor, which will open up the throttle, and that'll allow me to generate boost as I go up in the revs, and that will give me the torque I'm looking for. All right. So around the straight here, I'm in first gear, and then you're gonna watch the turbo boost right here, if you can see it. I'm in second, I'm gonna put my foot to the floor, and you can see it build. third gear so that's really how you use your turbo it's about where your throttle positioning is so it's it's less about holding it like with an NA car you have your power band where you're making maximum torque and horsepower and you want to sort of hold the revs there with changing your gears a lot and being precise with the throttle in a turbo car, it's more about just having the throttle open to keep you in boost to get maximum torque. That's really what it boils down to at the end of the day. This car has a zero to 60 of about 5.8 to six seconds. New. Um, new, that is, yeah. Um, so I'd assume this one's probably making, I mean, obviously I'm not excellent at shifting and I, you really shouldn't be very hard on these five speeds. They're notorious for being quite weak, but you know, it's, it's decently quick, but a lot of that speed is coming from having the throttle wide open and feeling the torque. Really revving out the turbo. Revving out the engine, revving out the turbo, keeping your boost high. So you can sort of feel it there. I don't know, it's probably not conveyed very well, but you sort of have, you have some moments of sort of nothing. You're accelerating linearly, but sort of nothing. And then you have a little bit more, you can feel the torque sort of start to come in. And then there's another point where you can sort of feel that you're getting closer to maximum boost. Oh, we got a, we got a uh, tractor here. Um, and at that point, once you're at maximum boost, you can really feel it sort of push you back in your seat. And that's when you're getting that maximum torque, maximum horsepower figure. Uh, about, this card's about 230 new, 227. Uh, and 217 pound-feet of torque. Uh, so this one's probably making around 20, 220. Um, around, if not slightly less, just because it's old. But it, it feels very solid. You know, turbocharged engines have a very unique characteristic. They tend to, I find them very enjoyable. There are some downsides. A lot of people don't like the fact that you have to wait for the boost to kick in. In the WRX, it's not so bad. One of the reasons why the WRX is a, is a good turbocharged platform is because, luckily, it has a top mount intercooler. So while you're not getting quite as much cooling on the turbo, um, and it's a little bit less efficient because it's heat sinked on top, you know, it, it heat sinks a little bit because it's sitting right on top of the engine. But um, it, it's got a faster throttle response and you build boost a little bit faster because there's less distance that that air has to travel to get to everything. It doesn't have to go around to the front and come back out and come back to the turbo. You can just go straight from the turbo to the intercooler, to the throttle body, exhaust, to turbo, you know, out. Um, it's a more direct system, which means that the WRX is very linear, a stock WRX. You know, a lot of these modified STIs will have a pretty big boost punch, but a stock WRX will have um, a very, a rather linear, at least for a turbocharged power band. Now, I wouldn't recommend consistently revving the car out as far as I was in those clips. That was more to just demonstrate how the boost builds. But when you're going for, say, a highway merge, it's reasonable to use your boost to be on boost. And how you would do that is you'd stay in a gear where you're not lugging the engine. So the engine is revving freely. So a good merging gear in the WRX to 5 speed is generally third gear. So you're in third gear and you open up the throttle a good amount. You're gonna to have to wait for the boost to build, but it won't take very long. And then as it builds, you'll feel the torque start to come in and you'll get up to speed. That's how you would use your boost. So it's about optimizing what gear you're in and then letting your throttle open up and letting the boost come in. But again, these engines are not the most durable things on the planet. I would not open it up past 5k during normal driving under most circumstances. It's just not worth it. 
it's okay to use your boost and get on boost during normal driving when you're not merging or you don't have any real need to be accelerating very fast. But remember that when you're on boost, you're also burning more fuel, which means you're making worse fuel economy. Now it is fun, and it does make the car peppier and faster, but it isn't always worth it for your normal commute. So you sort of have to decide what gear you want to be in, how wide open you want the throttle to be, how much boost you want to build, but that's the joy of a manual car and that's the joy of having a turbocharger is you get to choose when you want the power and when you don't. One other thing, like I mentioned briefly, is lugging the engine. Lugging the engine is, say, when you're in fifth gear going, say, 65, you're not going to be getting a ton of, or maybe 55, you're not going to be getting a ton of acceleration out of it, and you open the throttle up completely and let the boost build to max without the revs increasing very much and without your speed increasing very much. This is not good for your engine. You're just building a lot of boost and there's nowhere for that power to go because it can't get it out to the rest of the car's components. You don't want to be doing that. If you want to accelerate, don't rely on your uh, turbocharger to give you that torque. Drop a gear and then let the turbocharger bring the torque to you. So don't lug your engine and there's no reason to be on boost all the time.